Hey, it's Mike here, and today, can a vegan diet cure cancer? I wanna take a level-headed look at this topic and make sure that any claims made around it are scientifically valid and back. And so we're gonna look at a ton of studies on vegan cancer rates and mechanisms that a vegan diet may be helping fight cancer. So we're gonna look at dozens of studies in this video, which I'm really excited about. We're gonna try and make things like angiogenesis pretty simple, but really quick, I have a new shirt, and I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about that at the end. Let's get back into the science. Like pretty much everybody at this point, cancer is present in my family. So periodically I end up heavily researching it and asking the question, what would I do if I got cancer at some point? Or is there anything I can do to prevent it in the first place? So despite being super interested in this topic, I've kind of put it off because it's such a charged topic. And that's why I have to throw in a disclaimer saying I'm not a medical professional. I'm merely a master's in public health student. And this research is largely speculative. You know, we don't have the super definitive clinical trials yet on this stuff. So take it with a grain of salt. But don't eat too much salt. All right, zooming out to the epidemiological evidence, vegans pretty much across the board have lower levels of cancer, especially certain cancers like female reproductive cancers, which is 30% less compared to omnivores. And across multiple large studies, it appears that the general cancer rate for vegans is about 15% lower. This of course does include everybody that's eating a junky vegan diet. And we can all agree that not every vegan diet is gonna be helpful for cancer. Yeah, I'm on this new therapy where I just drink wheat juice, fermented wheat juice. Yeah, some people call it beer, yeah. And in terms of my history, a lot of what pushed me toward a vegan diet in the first place was studies on cancer. We have Dr. Colin Campbell, who talked about studies where they could turn cancer on and off in rats with animal protein. Now, obviously that isn't super definitive, especially not for humans, but it got me looking into this. And if you've ever scrolled back through my videos, you'll realize that my first ever video was Vegan Blood Kills Cancer, which was on the Ornish studies, which showed a massive slowing of cancer growth in a Petri dish and an increased ability to kill cancer with blood of people put on a plant-based diet. To be completely clear, it was a quasi-vegan diet, like 95 to 99% vegan diet. Like in this study where the diet group slowed cancer by seven times, a vegan diet plus three grams of fish oil. Why, Ornish? Why? And when I first went vegan, I had that mentality of, oh, 5% or less animal products is okay, but it very quickly became clear that that was not practical or achievable and that once you open the dam, it's just, it's over. All right, now let's go through some specific reasons that a vegan diet should give one an advantage in the fight against cancer and some particular choices you can make in the realm of a vegan diet to go even further, perhaps further than that 15% lower rate. Okay, let's get a little fancy and jump into something I haven't really talked about on this channel, and that is angiogenesis, which simply put is just the creation of new blood cells, which eventually can feed cancer, and anti-angiogenic just prevents that. There are well-studied anti-angiogenic foods, and guess what? They're not animal products. From anti-angiogenics researcher who authored this study, here is William Lee on the TED stage. In fact, if you actually block angiogenesis and prevent blood vessels from ever reaching cancer cells, tumors simply can't grow up. But once angiogenesis occurs, cancers can grow exponentially. So let me show you what happens when we put in an extract from red grapes, the active ingredient resveratrol. It's also found in red wine. This inhibits abnormal angiogenesis by 60%. Here's what happens when we add an extract from strawberries. It potently inhibits angiogenesis. An extract from soybeans. So the power of strawberries is astounding. If there was a drug that had the same effect, it would be worth billions. His whole talk will be linked below, but the point here is that a vegan diet will naturally push you to eat more plant foods, more anti-angiogenic foods, but you also have the choice to really go for it with those. I mean, looking at something like soy, people are kind of avoiding it, but the genistein in it is anti-angiogenic which is probably why it is associated with lower breast cancer risk in Japan, for example. Now, other foods that do the opposite, that grow blood vessels that are angiogenic, well, that brings me to a topic that I probably talk about too much, and that is IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one. From this study, insulin-like growth factor one contributes to the promotion of angiogenesis. No surprise there, it's a growth hormone. And from this study, animal protein appears to raise IGF-1 and plant protein appears to lower it. So it's no wonder that the vegans in the study had 13% lower IGF-1 levels on average. Now it's hard to say exactly how much this would affect cancer. Maybe it would be 13% less growth. Maybe it would push over some edge that would prevent cancer from starting, who knows? 
And cow's milk, America's favorite hormone cocktail, appears to raise IGF-1 as well from this study by about 10%. But there are other hormones we need to look at like estrogen, which plays a role in breast cancer and other reproductive cancers. From this study, quote, the daily intake of total investigated estrogens through milk is dramatically more than currently recognized. In fact, from another study, 60 to 80% of our dietary intake of all estrogen comes from dairy. And while they do add hormones to some milk, we are talking about naturally occurring hormones here. It's so bad that from this study, even dripping organic milk on prostate cells in a Petri dish increases growth by 30%. Well, if you try the same thing with almond milk, you decrease growth by 30%. Real milk versus almond milk. Ingredients spelling B. Lecithin. Lecithin. L-E-S. Your word is milk. I think the more important question, sir, is how do you spell cancer? Cancer from cow's milk. Now that's not telling us a ton about what's actually happening in the body unless somebody's actually injecting cow's milk directly into their tumor. Sorry, that was really gross. Here's a study that gave people actual milk to drink and they found that it raised their estrone, a type of estrogen, by about 25% in men and women and then lowered testosterone in men by 20%. Fun stuff. The point is, on a vegan diet, you dodge all that hormonal manipulation from dairy specifically, and that is probably a large part of why those vegans were recorded having 30% lower female cancer risk. All right, enough about hormones. Let's talk about antioxidants and DNA. Antioxidants fight oxidative stress, which is essentially a chain reaction that can cause DNA damage, lead to mutations, and then lead to cancer. So eating antioxidants is preventing the start of cancer. It's preventing that cancer party. For example, one reason that red meat is deemed a class 2A carcinogen is because of the heme iron. Heme iron in your colon can oxidize and then rip some DNA apart and then lead to colorectal cancer. A vegan diet obviously excludes that. And in terms of antioxidants in general, from this massive study of 3,100 foods, plant foods on average had 64 times more antioxidants than animal foods. So that's another advantage. Another negative of certain animal products, particularly present in pig products, is NEU5GC, which promotes tumor growth, or as I like to call it, necro eating ultimately five grows cancer. I don't wanna to go too deep into it here, but if you guys do want a future video on NEU5GC, let me know down below. And finally, there are some other carcinogens in meat like heterocyclic amines, which are caused by cooking meat at high temperatures. All right, let's move on to blood sugar. It appears that elevated blood sugar levels can also feed cancer from this study, quote, enhanced glucose uptake in cancer cells is a well-established hallmark of cancer cells. They're scientists, not English majors. And elevated blood sugar is an established predictor of cancer survival, probably because it fuels cancer growth. Diabetics generally have higher levels of blood sugar throughout the day, and vegans, according to one study, have as high as 78% lower risk of all diabetes. And this difference is likely from the buildup of animal fat in the muscle cells of people who eat meat and other animal fats, and that can lead to insulin resistance or gum up the insulin lock, as Neil Bernard puts it, which can then make your body not respond appropriately to sugar. And this is where choices on a vegan diet come into play. Obviously, eating some whole food complex carbohydrates are not gonna spike your blood sugar. Well, perhaps some refined sugar or even a lot of fruit will. As I learned in my blood sugar video, even five whole bananas does it for me. Despite studies showing that eating a smaller amount of bananas, blended or not, does not have a negative effect on your blood sugar. Then you have things like Gerson therapy, which includes juices that have apple, which can spike your blood sugar, though the apple juice industry would want you to think otherwise conspiracies. So maybe I need to do another blood sugar testing experiment video, or maybe a whole Gerson video too, because I definitely have some more to say about that. And now for another very interesting topic, and that is oxygenation. From this study, hypoxia or low oxygen is a critical hallmark of solid tumors and involves enhanced cell survival, angiogenesis, glycolytic metabolism, and metastases, which is the spreading of cancer. One treatment for cancer is actually putting people in hyperbaric chambers or high oxygen chambers, which have been shown to raise the oxygen level in your blood. 
We've seen studies that show positive results, others that show no noticeable results, but it does not appear to be dangerous. Problem is that there are simply so many types of cancer. There are over a hundred different general categories of cancer, so it could be helping some and not others. Interestingly, low oxygen levels can also alter epigenetics or how your genes are expressed, decreasing your ability to suppress cancer. Here's the thing, increased blood oxygen is great, but if your arteries are clogged, is it ever even gonna make it to the cancer site? Which brings me to Dr. Esselstyn's clinical trials of a whole food vegan diet for advanced cardiovascular disease, which showed a rapid increase in blood flow. So by clearing those arteries out, the oxygen is more likely to make it to the cancer site, which is obviously great. So it's all about whole plant foods, specifically nitrate rich plant foods like chard and beets that can dilate your arteries. On the opposite end, we have hyperlipidemia or fatty blood or even sludge blood, which is after eating a high animal fat or even oily meal, you can get an increase in fat in your blood, which can lower the oxygen content. One might call it babe's revenge. Now that we've covered a decent amount of science, I wanna move on to an anecdotal cancer reversal story. And that is of Jeanette, who was essentially sent home with cancer that has spread throughout her body to die. And instead she decided, no, I am going to go on a raw vegan diet. I'm going to do oxygen therapy and I'm going to run a lot. And amazingly, she reversed it. And I will say a raw diet in this situation definitely has a lot of advantages if you are eating enough calories. For example, it will sort of push you toward more higher antioxidant foods. And perhaps the most amazing part, once she was healed, her and her husband ran a marathon a day, every day for 366 days around Australia, just to show people how amazing the diet was. Have you ever even ran a marathon? Neither have I. And oxygen was part of her motivation for the exercise and studies like this show that yes, good things are happening with oxygen in your blood after exercise. This is likely part of the reason that exercise is associated with lower cancer rates in addition to just being healthier. From this study, the group that had the most exercise versus the least exercise had 20% less cancer, which is very notable. Then there's the story of Chris from Chris Beat Cancer. At age 26, he had colorectal cancer that had metastasized, it had spread, and then he decided, screw it, I'm going on a raw vegan diet, and then he managed to beat it. You can check out more about his story on chrisbeatcancer.com. And there are many other amazing stories of people reversing their cancer on a vegan diet, but we do not have the clinical trials yet. We need millions and millions of dollars and they would be quite difficult to orchestrate. So in the end, these are just stories, albeit amazing stories, which brings me to the language here. I think it's really important to make scientifically valid claims around veganism. And so would it be scientifically valid to say that a vegan diet cures cancer? Certainly a vegan diet will not always cure cancer or always even help the state of cancer. But yes, in certain cases, people have reversed hospice level cancer with a vegan diet. So while we can't say that we have proof that it will reliably reverse cancer, we definitely can say that vegans generally have lower cancer rates. I do feel comfortable saying that a whole food vegan diet has many benefits for fighting cancer, and we've gone over those benefits. You know, it's combining the power of anti-angiogenic foods, controlling your blood sugar, saturating your body with antioxidants, removing all of those hormones and carcinogens from animal products. So the data show that a vegan diet is advantageous on many levels, and for me, that is a powerful enough claim. So if that wasn't too confusing, I just wanna be cautious in the language that I use. Well, I am definitely optimistic about how diet can help with cancer. All right, now I wanna talk about this shirt. Should I put it on? Is that gonna be really meta? All right, here it is. It's me wearing me. Anyway, this idea is a shirt that one of my Patreon supporters, Justin, had. And at first I was like, that seems a little bit kind of narcissistic to just have a shirt with my sort of outline on it. But he was like, no, go for it. So I literally took a picture of me and traced everything and just added the color. And so it's available in a bunch of different shirts and a bunch of different colors. So you can go check that out. Okay, so that's it for today. Let me know down below if there are any topics in this video that you want me to go more in depth into or just what your thoughts are in general. All right, feel free to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Otherwise, you're probably not gonna know if I came out with a new video. All right, see you next time.